Come, you blessed of my father, says the Lord. I was sick, and you visited me. Amen, I say to you, whatever you did for one of the least of my brethren, you did it for me. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Today we're celebrating the memorial of St. Teresa of Calcutta. Brothers and sisters, to prepare ourselves to celebrate these mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who have taught your church to keep all the heavenly commandments by love of you as God and love of neighbor, grant that practicing the works of charity after the example of blessed St. Teresa of Calcutta, we may be worthy to be numbered among the blessed in your kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, let no one deceive himself if anyone among you considers himself wise in this age, let him become a fool, so he has to be wise. For the wisdom of the world is foolishness in the eyes of God. For it is written, God catches the wise in their own ruses. And again, the Lord knows the thoughts of the wise, that they are in vain. So let no one boast about human beings for everything belongs to you, Paul, or Apollos, or Cephas, or the world, or life, or death, or the present, or the future. All belong to you, and you to Christ, and Christ to God. The word of the Lord. The Lord belongs the earth and all that fills it. The Lord's are the earth and its fullness, the world and those who dwell in it, for he founded it upon the seas and established it upon the rivers. To the Lord. Who can ascend the mountain of the Lord, or who may stand in his holy place? He whose hands are sinless, whose heart is clean, who desires not what is vain. To He shall receive a blessing from the Lord, a reward from God his Savior. Such is the race that seeks for him, that seeks the face of the God of Jacob. The Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Come after me, says the Lord, and I will make you fishers of men. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. While the crowd was pressing in on Jesus and listening to the word of God, he was standing by the lake of Gennesaret. He saw two boats there alongside the lake. The fishermen had disembarked and were washing their nets. Getting into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, he asked him to put out a short distance from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the crowds from the boat. After he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into deep water and lower your nets for a catch. Simon said in reply, 
Master, we have worked hard all night and have caught nothing, but at your command I will lower the nets. When he had done this, they caught a great number of fish, and their nets were tearing. They signaled to their partners in the other boat to come to help them. They came and filled both boats, so that the boats were in danger of sinking. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at the knees of Jesus and said, Depart from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. For astonishment at the catch of fish they had made seized him and all those with him, and likewise James and John, the sons of Zebedee, who were partners of Simon. Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on you will be catching men. When they brought their boats to, to the shore, they left everything and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. This beautiful calling of James and John and Simon. And, um, and, it's, and, and of course also the, the great mystery of the, catch, the great catch of fish. And I wanted to speak about this story, at least to begin, by looking, looking at it through the perspective of the fish. This great catch of fish. Of course, it, from, from everyone around it gives incredible joy. We see the response of, of Simon. Um, filled with wonder and awe as he comes before the Lord. Depart from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. So he's with this amazement. But of course, there, there, I, I mean this a little bit facetiously. We're going to have a, a little bit of compassion on the fish because the, there's, there's a trauma that has just happened. They've been taking, taken out of their home, brought into the fresh air. Of course, they... They're not used to breathing that way. And of course, they, their lives now are destined to bring delight and joy to all of those who feast on them. Their lives are destined to bring satisfaction into their life. But of course, that, it comes at a cost, at the cost of their giving of their life. And so the, in being caught in this net, by being caught here, by the Lord, by, by those who were, were, were in the boat with, with Jesus. Their, their lives are being asked of them. They're going to be poured out. At the end, of, and it's just important to see that it's the, the mystery of being caught in the net. At the end, the, and, it's, and it's not an easy thing that was asked of them, of these fish. And the, in the end, we see Simon, James and John, I think Andrew's in, in the mix here too, they, 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 they followed Jesus and they left everything behind. So they, they've been caught by Jesus and their lives now are destined to be handed over. It's part, part of the beauty here of following Jesus. We're, we're leaving something very real behind. We're being caught leaving behind the world. But I think it's helpful to, to see it that way because, it, you know, in all of the people that we meet as we are witnessing to the Lord, we're, we're meant to have a little bit of compassion on them because what we're asking simply in our witnessing to Jesus is something at least a little bit traumatic, a leaving behind of, some, of, of a way of a world. But of course, we're inviting them into something far more wonderful, the great mystery of the joy of having our life be poured out all the way. And of course, St. Teresa, whom we're celebrating today, revealed that powerfully, that the great wonder of that. There's so many parts of her life. You know, I, I remember the, the story of her as she was on the train traveling. She had that vision of what she was going to be invited to do something completely different, to leave her old order behind. Of course, she was already following the Lord very deeply. And that led her, she was being caught more and more by the Lord. 
And she, of course, and, and the, the, the fruit that came from that is astronomical. And the, the souls that she caught over and over again. And of course, um, and, and she, she revealed, she, she again, everywhere, everywhere she went, whenever she spoke, people listened because she was feeding with a different kind of food a completely different vision of the world. She was really caught up in a life that's very different and so she began to feed with a different kind of food. I think she, she stands as a beautiful image. You know, that in the gospel today we see Jesus enter into Simon's boat and Jesus sits down and he teaches. And it's very clear that Jesus was in St. Teresa's boat speaking from her everywhere she went with his profound authority, the deep authority everywhere she went. And of course, everywhere she went, she also ultimately started um, to put the, the, that beautiful line underneath the crucifix everywhere she went, I thirst, I thirst, which was such a, a powerful expression of her spirituality. It's that, that thirst that the Lord has for every soul, especially for, for those who are the least among us, the poorest of the poor. But it's also, as St. Teresa would describe, the thirst of the Lord to be poured out, that he would be known that way, and that we would receive him. And that way Jesus really reveals himself to us, that he is the fish, the, our great fish, and he so desires to be caught and to be consumed, that, that we would have him in us. It's the way that he comes into us and takes authority within us to teach us what life really is. And of course, and, and so in that way, when we, when we feed on him, we allow ourselves even more deeply to be caught in his net, to really to become him, to become his presence in the world. And that presence is meant to be so palpable. I think again of St. Teresa. Everywhere she went, you know, people just wanted to be in her presence and were so delighted to be with her. There's a, uh, there is a, the, one of her, I don't think it's monasteries, I forget what you, what you call it, but a place where her sisters are right now in Minneapolis. And there are her relics that are there. You know, it's this great proclamation Mother Teresa was here. And we all know it's not really Mother Teresa that we are looking for, but it's the Lord who was in her, real, really. You know, we talk about the real presence of the Eucharist, and of course we mean that all the way. But people who touched Mother Teresa also touched the real presence of the Lord everywhere she went. And so she spread him and, and his life. So just our, our invitation today as we, as we draw near to the Lord today to receive our fish, our, the Lord, his life poured out for us. The invitation for us is to let ourselves be caught, to be taken out of the world all the more so that our life would be even more deeply re revelatory of him. We are bearing him everywhere we go. And just to lean it again, I know many of our Eucharistic ministers are here today. This is so essential for you. You are bearing the Lord. And everyone you go to is so longing to touch him in you. And the Lord has caught you. He is, you are his. And you are, you are revealing his life beautifully and deeply. So let's stand together and offer our prayers to our Heavenly Father. For the church, may the Lord bless and sustain her as she continues to proclaim God's salvation for all people. We pray to the Lord. For our world leaders, may the Lord make his presence known to them as they carry out their duties. We pray to the Lord. For those who struggle with unemployment, underemployment, or lack of dignity in their work, May God uplift them and bring them fulfillment. 
we pray to the Lord. For all of us gathered here, may the Holy Spirit fill us with the grace we need to grow stronger in our faith. We pray to the Lord. And for all of those who have gone before us marked with the sign of faith, especially for Valerie Broadbent, for whom this Mass is being offered. May God lead them to his eternal light. We pray to the Lord. Loving God, you show us your ways that bring abundance. Listen to the prayers we bring before you, which we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, O Lord, the offerings of your people, and grant that we who celebrate your Son's work of boundless charity may, by the example of Blessed Teresa of Calcutta, be confirmed in love of you and of our neighbor, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin, fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people. He stretched out his hands as he endured his passion so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your, your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, 
and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Bernard, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer one another the sign of peace. the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. 
Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we who are renewed by these sacred mysteries may follow the example of Blessed Teresa of Calcutta, who honored you with tireless devotion and by surpassing charity was of service to your people. Through Christ our Lord. Salutari sostia, que celi pandi sostium, vela premunt hostilia, darobu fer auxilium. Unitrino que domino, sit sempiterna gloria, qui vitam sine termino, nobis donat in patria. Amen.